uh, chapter, chapter 11 uh, risk return and the capital asset pricing model. The, um, we talked in the previous chapter about uh, mean variance analysis. The um, um, most widely used mean variance model is the capital asset pricing model. Uh, uh, they were basically continue off of the uh, uh, off of the uh, the the topics we covered in the previous chapter. So uh, so uh, learn how to or know how to calculate expected returns, um, ca calculate covariances, correlations, and betas. So these uh, co covariance, correlations, and betas are just an extension of standard deviation and variance. Uh, we're going to understand the impact of diversification. Uh, they, we're going to understand the systematic risk principle. Uh, talk about the security market line, the risk return trade off. Uh, then, we're gonna, then finally, we're going to learn how to use the capital asset pricing model. So, we have individual securities, expected return, variance, covariance, uh, the risk and return of portfolios. Efficient set for two assets, efficient set for many securities, talk about diversification, uh, riskless borrowing and lending, and then market equilibrium. So, and then the relation between relationship between risk and expected return, uh, talk, talking about the capital asset pricing model or CAPM as it's widely called. So, individual securities. Individual securities are, um, that are of interest are expected return, variance and standard deviation, and then covariance and correlation to another security or index. So we're measuring with covariance and correlation, we're measuring how they move in conjunction, how they respond to, to the changes in market information. So, uh, so this Example here, we've got uh, uh, a uh, two asset, uh, 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 two risky asset world. There's in this case, we have a one third chance of each state of the economy occurring, talking about recession, uh, normal, and boom. Uh, that's sort of 33.3 percent. This stock fund you know, in a recession gonna lose seven percent. Gain 12% a normal and 28% uh, a boom. So the uh, in this case we can uh, because the probabilities are even, we can literally add up the three numbers and divide by three. Um, the uh, if the probabilities are different, you multiply the probabilities time by that expected return. So bond funds 17% in a recession. Uh, makes sense. Interest rates typically follow the value of bonds goes up. Normal, normal return seven percent, a loss and a boom. Interest rates typically rise in a boom. So, so next, uh, uh, next slide. Calculating those expected returns. So the um, you know, no, if we again, if we added since the probabilities are even, we can add them up and divide by three. You get 11% for the stock fund, 7% for the uh, the bond fund. So the uh, the, uh, the square deviations uh, that we are here. That so that would uh, that that's going to be 11% minus or minus a negative 7%. Uh, so I square that, and that would give you the square, square deviations. You you sum those up, and then you take the square root to get the standard deviation. So the standard deviation in this case is uh, fourteen point three percent for the stock fund, eight point two percent for the bond fund. So, um, so you know again that expected return. At one third uh, time multiplied by the seven percent loss, one third times the twelve percent gain, and one third times the twenty eight percent equals eleven percent. So the uh, squared deviation, as I mentioned, so 
negative negative seven minus the expected return eleven percent squared. So that's point zero three two four. We take all those uh, take the uh, what the uh, variance with some one third of the of, of all the square deviations, and that's point two oh five. We take the square root of that be point one four three or one. 14.3 percent uh, uh, so um, the uh, covariance uh, not a very good example of how the uh, covariance is calculated uh, the, uh, I'm gonna I'll take a minute and actually write out what covariance the formula for covariance so uh, Okay, I took the opportunity to actually write out this is the this is a formula for covariance for um, for these. Uh, so on the left hand side we have uh, the uh, recession return for uh, uh, stock. So we lost seven percent minus the mean. We multiply that by the uh, the return for bonds. So the seven seventeen percent minus the expected return for bonds. This so this is. So this is recession, so uh, minus seven minus eleven, so that's minus eighteen. So um, seventeen minus seven, that's ten. So the probability of this is it, this is one third. So we multiply. So if these were different than one third, they could could be very very different. So and then the so twelve minus eleven for stock, that's one. Seven minus seven is zero for um, uh, so that's uh, normal. And then the uh, uh, 28 minus 11 is 17 for boom for stocks. And then a, a loss of 3% minus the expected return of 7%. That's a negative 10%. So then we multiply those out and add them up. And we get a covariance of negative point. Zero one one seven. So, um, so deviation compares each return in each state to the expected return. That's these these calculate the deviations and those the weight takes uh, takes the, uh, the product of the deviations multiplied by the probability in that state. Um, so the uh, so. We have a negative covariance um, that, which means that these uh, not only are the stocks and bonds not uh, not cor correlated, they're actually uh, they're actually negatively correlated. So they move in opposite directions, which we know to some extent is the case, because when the when the way our interest rates move in a recession and uh, and in a boom, uh, so. Uh, so uh, we can use covariance to calculate correlation. Uh, correlation is a number number between uh, negative one and uh, and one. So um, the uh, um, this is in this case we our imaginary portfolio is has a correlation which is. Covariance divided by the two standard deviations. This this would be the standard deviation for stocks and the standard deviation for bonds, and that gives us uh, so our covariance of negative point zero one one seven divided by the standard deviation for stocks at point one four three, multiplied by the standard deviation for bonds, gives us a uh, almost perfectly negatively correlation, which would be ideal not necessarily the case uh, but they uh, uh, as we'll see in the next lecture you know, offer some significant diversification benefits <laughs>